Hi, I welcome you all for today's class on analysis of discrete time systems. Here we will be detailing about system function, transfer function, its region of convergence, we call it as ROC, unit sample function, impulse response, frequency response and so on. Before going to be detailly analyzing about that, I like to reference uh, about the Z transform and its properties which we already been covering in your previous classes. Just to remind few things about the shifting property, let me give you this. Z transform of Y of N gives you Y of Z, capital Y of Z. And let's talk about the shifting property. If it's shifted by one unit in time domain, that is Z transform of Y of N minus 1, it gives a delay element that is Z inverse Y of Z plus Y of minus 1 and where your Y of minus 1 is going to be your initial condition or boundary condition. Yes, and let's talk about when it is delayed by 2 units that is Z transform of Y of N minus 2 then there will be two delay element that is z inverse into z inverse that is z power minus 2 y of z plus z inverse y of minus 1 is a boundary condition and plus y of minus 2. It goes like this for the other delay elements. If you want y of n minus 3 then you go with z power minus 3 and so on. To summarize that that you know that to analyze any continuous time systems, you need a differential equation. So you will be solving out that by using Laplace transform and to find out the, the solution for that. Similarly, for a discrete time system, we will be given with a difference equation and we are going to see how we are going to solve those difference equation. Yes. To make it very clear, I have taken a, a small problem here for that to make you understand the all these things which I have listed in the first slide. A causal system is given by a difference equation that is y of n plus 1 by 4 y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n plus 1 by 2 x of n minus 1. We have been asked to find the system function its ROC, unit sample response, frequency response and we also need to find the magnitude and the phase for it. And let's go for the solution now. So to make it possible, the first step, we have to apply Z transform on both sides of the equation, that's the difference equation. So it becomes Z transform, Z of Y of N plus 1 by 4 Y of N minus 1, which is equal to Z transform for the right hand side. Uh, part that is x of n plus 1 by 2 x of n minus 1. By using the property of linearity, you can very well split this. So, is that transform of y of n plus 1 by 4 as constant, take it out. z of y of n minus 1 is equal to z of x of n plus 1 by 2 a constant again, z of x of n minus 1. Now, let me, let me apply the shifting property of z transform. So, we get y of z plus 1 by 4 z inverse y of z minus y of 0 is equal to x of z plus 1 by 2 z inverse x of z minus x of 0 plus. So, now in the problem, we are not given with any initial conditions or boundary conditions. So, let us make that value to be 0. Since it is not given, let us make those values to be 0. So, ignoring those boundary conditions, you get y of z plus 1 by 4 z inverse y of z is equal to x of z plus 1 by 2 z inverse x of z. Try to group all your y of z one side and try to group all your x of z other side. So, by grouping it, I am trying to bring what is my h of z. h of z is nothing but your transfer function that is y of z by x of z. So, when you find, when you try to find y by x, you get from the above, you get 1 plus 1 by 2 z inverse 
divided by 1 plus 1 by 4 z inverse and this is going to be your h of z which is also called as transfer function it's also called by other name a system function which i have been telling you a lot more times about this in the class when i'm teaching your analysis of continuous time systems okay so now h of z i could write in the other way with positive powers of z that is 1 plus 1 by 2 z divided by 1 plus 1 by 4 z and it's going to be z plus 1 by 2 equal to z plus 1 by 4 now i need to find the region of convergence so i told you in the class that concerned about your denominator so denominator port try to find your poles so when i my denominator is z plus 1 by 4 equate it to 0 and try to find your pole first and mark that pole here that is minus 1 by 4 now let's find the region of convergence that is z plus 1 by 4 is greater than 0 because it's given as you it's a post let us take it by default it's a positive sided signal since you often is given there so z is greater than minus 1 by 4 so with minus 1 by 4 as a pole draw a circle keep it as a radius and since it is greater than minus 1 by 4 so your ROC is going to be exterior to the circle and that's how I have marked here in the z plane that is sigma in the x axis and j omega in the y axis and I'm going to call this uh, plane as z plane with that okay so now we have got our ROC now coming to our second point that what we have been asked to find is unique sample response unique sample response is also called as an impulse response of a system maybe uh, just to remind you again let me talk about this let us take a system and when you give your input as x of n you get your output as y of n so in particular when i make my input as delta of n that is i call this as impulse function i can also call this as unit sample function then my output that is y of n is called as an impulse function impulse response sorry impulse response that is given by h of n it's also called as unit sample response when the input is impulse function my output is called as impulse response otherwise unit sample response so considering this here i just consider my x of n is equal to delta of n since because it's given as unit sample response i need so i understood that my input should be certainly an impulse function that is delta of n in and delta of n where your delta of n exists only at the value of 0 you have a peak value of 1 if it's unit sample this is delta of n so when i find z transform for x of n that is delta of n here it's going to be your 1 so in this case i just say the h of z is equal to y of z by x of z being the transfer function and when i substitute x of z is equal to 1 and y of z is going to be h of z so i'm trying to write my output that is my uh, unit sample response but it is not a response because i need to find what is h of n or y of n but here i'm talking about in frequency domain frequency domain that is h of z only and so its answer is 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2z plus 1 by 4z solving that let me take uh, in terms of z so 2z plus 1 divided by 2z and here the other side it becomes 4z by 4z plus 1 just cancelling out i get uh, i get term like this that is 2 plus 2 into 2z plus 1 by 4z plus 1 i'm trying to split as two terms okay two terms so that is 4z by 4z plus 1 and plus 2 by 4z plus 1 and many a time we discussed in the class that at uh, you know that what is z transform of a power n u of n yes is equal to z by z minus a so I'm I I'm willing to uh, 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 rewrite my answer in terms of this z by z minus a or z by z plus a so that I get my answer easily. I can do it my inverse transform for that to get my uh, value of y of n. So in that case, uh, I get uh, my first term. 
I get z by z plus one. So this is this is very well. I can write this term. That's why for my second term, I don't have z there. Okay, but I have only z plus some constant a z plus one by four. So to make a, to make an introduce and z there, I'm multiplying multiplying by z inverse into z. So that I get one, and so uh, following this. And take inverse as a transform of y of z to get y of n. Again, by using the same shifting property of z transform, that is z of x of n minus m. That is m units. If it is shifting in time, then there will be delay of z power minus m x of z. Okay. So using this, and let us take x of n minus one delay. Then it's going to be z power minus one x of z. So that's what we have got. Uh, z power minus one. So what I'm see, I'm considering this term as x of z, okay, and this is going to be my delay z power minus one. Therefore, I understood that if x of n is a signal, here my signal is delayed by one unit. So wherever I have n, I'm going to replace n with n minus one. Is that clear? So if you see here, here is z by z plus One by four, so I am writing as minus one by four power n u of n. This part should be clear for you since we have covered a lot. Coming to the second part, as I was telling you, here you have some delay element that is multiplied with your x of z. Okay, so my x of z is again minus one by four, one by four power n u of n. But there is some delay element that inverse. So in time domain, I should shift that by one unit. That's n minus one everywhere. Replace. I should replace that with wherever I had n. So that's why that's the reason why I'm writing n minus one and n minus one here. Okay. So now my solution for our uh, that is uh, unit sample response is also called as impulse impulse response is given as h of n. Okay. And here the same as y of n. That is minus one by four power n u of n plus one by two minus one by four power my n minus one into u of n minus one. Hope this point is clear for you now. So now, uh, well, let's go for the third point where we have been asked to find the frequency response. I've been telling you in the class that frequency response is same as that h of z, that is transfer function, other way system function. to be a make a uh, to be uh, to be very special about it just try to replace in terms of omega and you know that you know that z is equal to e power j omega so wherever you had z in the previous step try to replace z with e power j we had z plus 1 by 2 so we are replacing e power j omega plus 1 by 2 and z power j omega plus 1 by 4 So this is going to be your um, your h of e power j omega, your frequency response, and you know that e power j theta is equal to cos j theta plus i sine cos theta. I'm sorry, e power j omega is equal to cos theta. Let's take e power j theta. Okay, so cos theta plus j sine theta. Using that, I have expanded that. I've been also asked to find the magnitude and angle part. So magnitude is is going to be square root of a square plus b square. I mean the real part square plus imaginary part square. And here this term is going to be my real part, and this part is going to be my imaginary part since I have i here. Okay. So real part square plus imaginary part square is going to be your uh, h of magnitude of h of j omega. And going for angle part, angle is nothing but tan inverse of b by a. So here you had two terms there, and for the first term it is tan inverse of imaginary part by your real part. Similarly, for the denominator part, the same formula, but you will be having minus in the front. That is minus tan inverse of imaginary part by real part. So here we have found the magnitude and the phase response. uh phase how do the phase behave for a frequency response so i think you are clear with this is how we have to analyze a discrete time system by applying z transform 
if you wanted to apply uh, the same if the question is asked like uh, do the solve the problem by using a discrete time fourier transform then from the beginning try to apply remove z and instead of z try to apply e power j omega and do again the uh, apply dtft on both the sides the same method follow try to group your y one side x one side and try to bring y of z by x of z just nothing but your h of z i mean h of e power j omega there okay so in that case you, you there is nothing like separate a frequency response and transfer function and all because everything is in terms of e power j omega so we'll be getting the answer okay uh, so that's it for today students hope you understood if you have any doubt please uh, let me know we'll discuss that in tomorrow's class okay students bye take care